Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. I am a full-time furniture flipper and in this video I'm going to be bringing you along with me as I take an adorable little antique dresser that I found for free on the side of the road, fix it up and give it a brand new modern makeover. In case you missed last week's video, I made a pretty big announcement about some important changes that are happening to my furniture flipping business, Salvaged by K. Scott. I have been finding, fixing, and rehabbing pieces of furniture and reselling them for a profit for the last five years. But now, because of this incredible community that we have been able to build here on YouTube, I've decided to shut down the sales portion of my business and instead, all of the furniture flips that you see me working on here on the channel are going to be donated to local charities instead. So please make sure that you are subscribed and have your notifications bell turned on so that you never miss out on a brand new video from me. And now that we've got all of that business stuff out of the way, let's get into this makeover. This tiny three drawer dresser has kind of a French provincial vibe to it. I can't find any markings, so I can't say the age for sure. I think it's getting pretty close to about 100 years old, and it has definitely seen more than one makeover in its day. I like to start off all of my furniture projects by removing the drawers and taking off any hardware. I don't know that these knobs are original to this piece, but I am definitely going to be taking them off and replacing them with something a little fancier. This funky butterfly contact paper drawer liner also needs to go. There were quite a few cobwebs on the inside of this dresser, so I gave everything a really good vacuum, and then I was ready to clean. I like to clean with TSP or trisodium phosphate, which is a really heavy duty degreaser and deglosser that is going to get any dirt or grime off of this surface before I move on to my next step. Two of the drawers have these carved details, and while I do think that they're beautiful, they are not going to go with the more sleek, minimalistic design that I have in mind for this dresser, so I'm going to go ahead and fill them in with some Bondo, auto body filler. This is a two-part epoxy product, just like Minwax's High Performance Wood Filler or Verithane's Classic Wood Filler. Bondo does also make a wood filler product, but I don't have access to that, and this is pretty much the same stuff. There is a beige putty inside the can, and then it also comes with this little tube of cream hardener, which is red. All you do is mix the two products together until the color is consistent, and then you are ready to apply it to your repairs. A little warning here, this is very stinky stuff, so you do want to make sure that you are working in a well-ventilated area and wearing a respirator to protect your lungs. This product does also set up and dry very quickly, so you want to make sure that you're only mixing up the amount that you need and that you're moving quickly. After about 30 minutes of dry time, my Bondo was ready to be sanded smooth. I put some 80 grit paper on my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray sander so that I could remove any excess Bondo and start smoothing out these drawers. It is extremely common when you are trying to fill in deep details like this or even hardware holes for it to take two or three or even four sometimes applications of your filler to really get a smooth, even finish. After I sanded down my first application, I definitely had some little pockets and air bubbles in there. So I mixed up some more Bondo and applied a second layer. While that was drying, I switched out the sandpaper on my sander to some 180 grit so that I could start smoothing out the rest of the dresser. This thing has been painted a lot. I think I counted four different colors on there. So there are lots of brush marks, painted over chipped areas, and drips that needed to be smoothed out. I also made sure to take a few minutes to sand the inside of the drawers. 
they weren't in terrible condition but they did have some staining and were just kind of dirty so a fresh sand is going to bring that wood right back to life When I was all done with my sanding, I grabbed a damp microfiber cloth to wipe back any dust. I'm gonna be spraying this piece with my Gravity Fed HVLP pneumatic spray gun. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes to mask off the drawers to protect them from any overspray. Next up, it is time to prime. I am using my all-time favorite tried and true Zinzer Bin Shellac Base Primer. This stuff is heavy duty. It is going to seal in any potential bleed through spots from coming up through my new finish. And it's also gonna give me a really nice even substrate across all of the different textures that I've got going on. I've got bare wood, wood filler, previously painted pieces. So this is just gonna make sure that everything is a nice consistent finish. I was able to really quickly spray two coats of primer over all of the areas that I was going to be painting. And I do want to mention, because I've got a lot of questions recently about cleaning this shellac base primer out of my spray gun. Shellac and water do not mix. So you need to make sure that your spray gun is completely dry before you add your primer into the gun. And then when you're ready to clean it out, I just pour a little bit of regular household ammonia into my gun and pull the trigger a few times to let that ammonia get down through the spraying mechanisms. That will break up the shellac enough that you can go on and clean out your gun with just regular soap and water cleanup like normal. After my primer had dried, I could see that there was still a lot more texture on the drawers than I wanted. There was a lot of wood grain showing through where I had sanded through all of the coats of paint and I could also see the outlines of those areas that I had filled in with Bondo. To fix all of that I turned to some lightweight drywall spackling and I just used a putty knife to apply a really thin skim coat over the drawers to fill in all of those imperfections. Once this is dry and I sand it back with a 400 grit fine sandpaper, it is going to fill in any divots, wood grain, anything that's going on that I don't want to be going on. This stuff is going to make it disappear. Then I will apply another coat of primer to seal that all up and I'm ready to move on to paint. For the paint on this dainty little dresser, I chose House in Canvas chalk finish furniture paint in the color Dusty Rose. I filled up a clean spray gun with some paint and poured in a little bit of water. I never measure this. I don't have any ratios to share. I just go by feel. I pour them both into my gun and give it a good shake to mix. I actually sprayed my first coat of paint with the dresser upside down just so that I could get around those little feet really well. And then I flipped everything the right way around and gave it another two quick coats of paint. Once my last coat of paint was dry, I noticed that there was just a little bit of a rough texture left behind from the sprayer. So I used some more 400 grit sandpaper and a really light hand just to smooth that out. To seal up and protect my new paint job, I'm going to be using Varathene Diamond Wood Finish in my favorite satin sheen. I like to apply two thick coats or three thinner coats to the top of my furniture pieces just because that's where they receive the most wear and tear and then I do two coats on the body. Mm -hmm. 
The next morning I brought everything into my kitchen for finishing touches and to get it ready for photos. I decided to put these gorgeous brass drop poles from Lee Valley on the bottom two drawers. I think they mirror the curvy details really well. And then on the top drawer, I dug through my stash of antique pulls and grabbed these beautiful little rosettes. Did you think I was done? Cause I thought I was done, but I'm not. Once I had all the hardware on, I tried to push in this bottom drawer and it didn't fit. It was catching along the top and also on the sides. So I had to pull it back out, take it back out to the garage. I used some 80 grit coarse sandpaper to grind away as much wood as I could off of the top and the sides of the drawer. After quite a lot of fussing and sanding, I finally got the drawer back to a point where it would slide into its spot nicely. I grabbed a small artist brush just to touch up my paint job on the top edge of that drawer. And then I grabbed some of Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter and smeared it around on the inside of these old wooden drawers to rehydrate and condition the wood and leave this antique piece with a fresh citrus scent. I found this dresser for free and I've got about $40 of material costs invested into this flip with about four and a half or five hours worth of labor. Like I mentioned, this dresser is going to be donated, but if I was planning on listing it for sale on Facebook Marketplace in my local market, I'd probably be asking somewhere between $300 and $350. That is right on par with similar pieces of refurbished furniture that are currently listed for sale by my furniture flipping peers and still a really great deal on a solid wood piece of furniture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. I hope that you are inspired to look at some of your own furniture a little bit differently and maybe even pick up a can of paint. I'm going to leave a few more videos over here that I think you might like to watch next and I will catch you guys next time.